All right, what's going on everyone? So this is actually gonna be um, an update on the SS-125. Uh, well, after many, many months of having this in my workshop and no luck figuring out what it is. Um, actually, I'm trying to open this up one-handed. It's kind of hard to do. I was uh, bored in the workshop once, or one day, and I had uh, the manual. I printed off the operation an installation guide you can see right there and going through it one day I saw this diagram and I just took a minute and read it and read the description above it but what really caught my eye was main in, or main power input which is supposed to be going to the um, transformer and then to the capacitors all that stuff but the other thing that caught my eye was these three right here you have a monitor signal which goes back to the SS-22. This is the SS-122, SS-125, and SS-124. This is the controller, beacon, and the um, photo control. So you have your monitor signal going back to the SS-122 from the 125. Then you have a sync timing signal, which is what times out the flash and um, syncs all the flash heads up. And then you have control power. Well, control power says right here, control power to the obstruction warning light activates relays, which determines the intensity of the flash. Now, what I didn't know was I actually had a spot, um, I believe it's TB2 right there. That's what actually controls the relays. This power here, that just goes from the relay to the transformer. So what I thought was, this is what controlled everything. That controlled the entire beacon. What I didn't know is this is what actually does the relays. So when I plug it in and pull out this interlock, what do you know? It flashes. So it works. Now I know what you're probably thinking or going to say, I know it's not flashing at the rate it's supposed to flash at, and that is because I don't have a sync timing signal. So right now, this flash head is going into what's called self-oscillation, which basically prevents it from going into a runaway situation where it just goes into an uncontrollable flash. Which, I mean, it still goes into an uncontrollable flash, but at least it's not flashing or the um, trigger transformer is going non-stop or some nonsense like that so right now it's in day mode which is 200,000 to 270,000 wow that just caught my eye right there ow so as you can hear I just got blinded from it by just a glance so I'm gonna shut the door I'm gonna let this thing flash for a couple of minutes or a couple of flashes but I know it's probably not showing up good on camera the afterglow is but the amount of energy coming off this light, like right now, I'm standing about a good, oh, 10 feet away from it right now, and I can feel the pulse no problem whatsoever. Like, I can feel the pulse each time it flashes, the heat pulse, that is. Um, you get up close and put your hand right here on the glass, and it actually, it actually um, kind of burns a little bit. I mean, it's bright, and I'll shut up and let you hear it if you want. So I can actually feel my phone pulsing whenever I hit it right next to it. So that's that one. It works. And I actually probably didn't need to replace a good portion of what I have replaced. I got extra relays. I even have an S, I think it's the S2 switch, which is the controller switch, remote local, and the interlock. Brand new. I got voltage cards. I got an extra transformer right there. I have tons of spare parts for it. Um, now, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you all this. Uh, I, uh, the same seller who I bought this from, uh, they uh, had another one. And I asked them, because they had pictures of the outside of the unit. But for what, from what I've learned from this one, outsides mean nothing whatsoever. So I sent them an email saying, hey, um, could you guys please take some more photos of the insides of it? Or if not... Could you drop the price a little bit? Because they were asking like a thousand dollars for it, 
and it honestly looked new, but that was, I, I was judging it from the photos of the outside. Well, they sent photos of the inside. Well, I, they responded back, well, we'll send you some photos of the inside, and we'll take some money off of it. So, and this beacon's been on their page for, oh crap, I'd like to say three or four years, and no one ever put interest into it. So I imagine that's why they said, well, we'll take some money off if that means you'll buy it. So after that, it didn't take me long to really think that over. Um, so here it is. It is a also a SS125. This one says it's uh, manufactured by EG&G, which is the same company as Honeywell. Well, I figure. Um, it's still labeled as a Huey and Phillips Honeywell, so it's the same daggone thing. Uh, this thing, you could tell, it's shiny. It looks brand new. And honestly, I can tell it's never been mounted on anything. I mean, you could see right there. I'll show you the front of it because the front's where it would show being bolted. There is no circle from being bolted. As whereas this one over here, you can see the circle from where it was bolted right there. Uh, we'll open it up real fast. Let you see the insides. And that's a brand new flash tube. This one didn't come with a flash tube, so I had to purchase that myself. Which that's a brand new tube. And here's the insides of it. The only thing that I did to this unit was I swapped out the voltage card and there was a little baggie about right here that had extra fuses. Actually, I'll go show you that right now. So behind the S1 switch is the little baggie containing uh, extra fuses. You can hear them in there. Uh, this also had, this also was had a, or it also had a power whip mounted or attached already so I took that off because it's uh, kind of a pain in the butt to work with it's pretty rigid so it didn't want to move but you can see all the cables for remote operation and there's the input power cables so came with its own power up I think it's a 25 or 30 foot whip I don't remember it might be 15 for all I know anyway there's the insides of it I did the same thing spliced uh, two cables to one that way I can just have one power cable and look how shiny that is. I mean, that's it's nice and pristine. I mean, you can see the reflection of my phone in the bottom right there. And here's the amazing part. It was date stamped August of 1991. So this beacon is actually older than I am. So that being said, we'll plug it in. Have it set in day mode. And there it is. Now this one has a little bit audible difference in it, plus it flashes at a different rate. I don't know if it's um, something to do with the circuit cards, what flashes at a different rate, I don't know. This one flashes about every two seconds, whereas the other one flashes every two and a half to three. I mean, I'm off by half second, that's not too bad, but I mean, I'll show them, let you listen to it. There's that one. That one tested and or is tested and works. Actually, I'll just cycle through the. Well, we'll just kind of glimpse of that one too. I gotta quit blinding myself. So I'll we'll cycle through the different modes of it. Start in night mode. So this one only does a flash. It's supposed to do a burst. Actually, both of them are. So now we'll switch it to twilight. You can actually watch the relay click right there. And that's twilight. That's 20,000 candela. Night mode is uh, 2,000. And here comes day mode, which is 200,000. Gosh, that's bright. So there's that one. You can see the trigger transformer discharging. I'll shut the door. So there's that one. Tested and works, no problem. Uh, the only thing that I need to try and get is an SS122 to control them, but that's later on down the road. 
And uh, just for an update, if you guys want, I can keep doing videos because I got uh, more obstruction lights I can do videos on. There's a LA 10 down there. And I actually have a project that I'm going to be working with this for. Hopefully it comes in soon. I uh, ordered a casing, which is just this part here. Uh, it was um, used. They took out the inside, which I'm okay with because I already have a flash plate assembly here. So I got another beacon pretty much coming. I just got to make it happen. But uh, there's that. And there's the high intensities. Uh, my next strobe, besides that uh, FH306, I'm going to be building out of scratch parts. Is um, I'm going to try and get an FTB205, which is a flash technology high intensity strobe. If I can find one, which I think I have one, I just got to buy it. Uh, anyway, guys, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Uh, if you guys actually like these videos, I'll consider making a channel specifically for my obstruction lights. Uh, just let me know if you guys are interested in that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.